that went into effect some couple of years after he had did what he did. Uh, and the limited limit was that uh, Habeas Corpus would be limited. Uh, it's supposed to have been a, you know, against the death row, but death row is still not, don't get, don't get me wrong, they should have unlimited resources and time because you could always find evidence that someone was praying. I mean, Anderson just recently, Glenn Ford was at 26 years, uh, two weeks ago, and he was released from Louisiana. That was John Thompson was another. We go down the line, you know, name the people who were released. But uh, it was as a result of uh, Clinton doing what he did that they changed the law. So we realized that our time was limited. Uh, Albert Woodfox had been convicted, and even though we were all being held in close cell restriction, we decided that if we did not go back to court, and if we did not, you know, you know, implement some form of resistance, you know, judicial resistance, then we would be stuck in court. So we went back to court. And, and so Albert case was overturned. When Albert case got overturned some 20 years after John Sinkfield uh, had prosecuted him, by this time, John Sinkfield had become the Attorney General of the state of Louisiana. Further making his career off of Albert, his best friend, the present Attorney General, um, Buddy Caldwell, they grew up five years old. They went to grade school, they went to law school at Yellow. You know, John Sinkfield, now is the Attorney General, he got to save his buddy career. When Albert Kidd's first got overturned in 91, when we got it overturned in 91, with our lawyers, we got it overturned sometime in, in, in 91. By this time, John Sinkfield and <coughs> Julie Cullen, another attorney general of the state of Louisiana, she decided that she wanted to try Albert as a black panther uh, because John Sinkfield, her boss, and, I mean, this goes on and on. It's, it's like a pink place down there in Louisiana. We could make connection with all these folks doing things and intermingling and doing this thing. They all were buddy buddy. So when you ask me why would they, you know, why is this happening? It's happening because we have people who were connected with this case way back who have made their careers and who want to validate their careers and keep their careers validated. And because they want to keep their careers validated like this, then whatever means that they chose to keep Alpha in harmony in prison to make sure that their careers are validated, they keep them in prison. And all of this has been brought out. You know, all of this has been alluded to. But it's, so when you ask, why do I think things are the way they are? Well, that's the reason that they have a vested interest to validate their careers and make sure that their careers and their lawyers rest upon uh, a conviction that they secure though falsely, using all type of prosecutorial misconduct, uh, it's nevertheless, uh, they, will, they manage to do this. And this is the reason why they do it. There is no other logical explanation. Uh, because the, the lady who said that she would prosecute Albert as a black panther, she made sure of this. Uh, usually when a case is overturned, it don't go to the attorney general office. It goes back to the district attorney office where the case was tried. But they took it upon themselves to take this case and to retry Albert as a black panther, and which was, you know, uh, that was a prerogative to do it. But when you ask me why, this is the reason why. They prosecuted, wanted to prosecute Albert, they wanted to find him guilty, and they got to validate their careers on it. And that's the reason why. That is the only quote, logical and rational reason that I can see why Buddy Caldwell, you know, Julie Cullen, and John Sixfield, who's still around, by the way, but no longer Attorney General, who's behind the scenes, full of strength, why things are the way you I think someone to the left up there have a question. Keisha?
statement and a question. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I, I, I believe that, that, you know, again, I think people, you know, prison is not the only place where immorality is practiced. Of course, it's society is down. Uh, but I think if we start, you know, we start with prison, I, I, I think we filter it down, of course. Uh, people are impacted by, there are limitations, restrictions. And I don't get me wrong, I don't, you know, it, it, uh, I don't want to equate, you know, people who lived in society uh, with the things that they are confronted with, which are many, and should be dealt with in, 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 in certain manner. I think probably the most prevalent thing right now is because prison is the thing that impacts us all in some and it it, 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 it looks in a dog or in a light or any way you want it to look, waiting to impound or imprison even those people you refer to in society who can't dance in the street. It is waiting in a gap, waiting to, to, to get you. So we have to, I think, deal with that is much more prevalent, in my opinion. And don't get me wrong, without sounding, you know, I don't want to sound as, as if I am disregarding anything that you are saying, because you are absolutely correct. It has to be dealt with. But there are certain priorities that we have in life, I believe, and some priorities um, are more prioritized. We have to prioritize some more than we do. But all of them are priorities. But some take precedence over others, and I think uh, right now, the way prisons are, I think we have just have to take precedent over us. And I think everything else that we are trying to do, we will evolve into doing this, I believe. For you, and she's not going to be called on. Oh, I, I, oh. Uh, so I, I, I'll, I'll make sure you get called. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I just wanted to you know, you talk a little bit about um, J. Edgar Hoover and Colin Telco and um, you know, how that took time led to the Black Panther Party kind of breaking down, but how people are still active. And, um, you know, you also talk about the prison population, how it's much worse now. And I just want to know, like, um, is that ever make you feel like we're losing ground rather than building power, like that people power you were talking about. 
how, how widespread, how, you know, much power the Black Panther Party built. Like, what is what is the type of thing you think about today that they might, they might start reversing that trend? Mm -hmm. Well, what I see today is, what I see today is, I think that this being reversed. I think people uh, have begun, they have begun uh, to see that, you know, that, that prison itself is almost kind of to, you know, to dehumanize and slave. And I think people understand that prison itself, uh, without being able to do anything about it, or maybe not want to do, I think they got the idea, they understand, I think that we have the same about prison. And I think that in itself is a plus. Uh, I think the more people become educated about prison, I think the more people we have on our side, you know, who will be able to do something on it, put their might, or put, put their family in the power, and create a ripple, and this ripple can touch up with others. I think that, um, I think that is good. Uh, the question up there. Uh, thank you for your talk. Um, so, two things. This, you're saying that you would not let you were in prison, but you would not let the prison be in you. Were there days when that was a real struggle for you, number one? And number two, talk a little bit about your honorary law degree from Cambridge University. Well, when I say prison, <clears throat> wasn't it wasn't in me. Uh, I was in prison. Yeah, there were some days that, you know, you have to, you know, put one foot beyond the other. Uh, again, though, with my, uh, you know, my newfound uh, belief and uh, my newfound ideology and my conviction, I was able to, uh, I think, for a little time, um, I think that allowed me to put my foot uh, beyond the other one. And, you know, you know, I think that helped me survive. Uh, the other question was, what other? Your honorary degree. I'm a very doctor's degree. I don't usually talk about that all, all the time. I think I mentioned it to the first time to my, to my cousin. I made it mention it to, to Brad, I think, uh, uh, earlier. But I, uh, I see that just what they say it is. It's just an honorary doctor of law degree uh, that people have. That people, of course, that was, I, I've had several colleges may mention that out, you know, it would give me a, I should have a law degree, because I speak to a lot of law classes, uh, but I think Cambridge was the one that I think had the political courage to kind of give me a, 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 a honorary doctorate of law degree, and I, I think it's something that's, uh, it's, I think it's something that, I don't know, it, it's a recognition that I'm, I'm doing something that, uh, maybe I am, the pebbles in the pond, that I'm throwing the pond up had gotten some ripples, and I think the, the fact that I was able to get this law degree, um, uh, honorary, honorary, I think, it says something. So, but they recognize that you are very astute. <laughs> I think they probably do, which is good. 